able to let go. Okay, so there's no form, no feeling, no perception, no formation, no consciousness. So, look, there goes what we thought of the skandhas and within the realms, because the realms are in the fifth skandha of consciousness. No eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind. There goes our sense organs that are within form. Now look at these. These are the objects of the senses. No appearance, sound, smell, taste, touch. Dharmas are the mind. These are, dot is another word, refers to the relationship between them. These are also no. Now, just beware, this is challenging the whole way we see the world. And what it's going to end up saying is a lot of what we take for granted, and what all our scientists take for granted, is, I mean, they're just fine in, when they discover how things work, but they've also got a heavy metaphysics behind them that we think is just that. Okay, no ignorance, no end of ignorance, you know, old age and death, there are the nirvanas and the whole cycle challenging our notions of causality. And no suffering, the origin of suffering, no cessation, no path, a four noble truths, no wisdom, and no attainment. The goal, that you were going to attain nirvana, or some folks, no attainment. All right, clean sweep, everything. The Zen room that you see, that's the clean sweep, as well as Zen those are very clean. Uh, there was a hand. Well, um, people, Buddhists have arguments about this. Buddhists in this country, because we have all of these traditions here, and they get to talk to each other, and people know about this, and they debate that. So, go on. Uh, okay, yes. Well, yeah. Okay, this is a great question. The question is, um, obviously, Buddhism changes. It's going to change again. So why? And the two possibilities given are uh, it evolves because of society and people and so on, or it evolves in some kind of natural way because it gets deeper and faster, as the tradition says. So good thing to think about this. And I'll just give you a hint, which will be clearer, um, I hope, in the next two weeks. But that those, from the Buddhist point of view of interdependence, we haven't gotten to yet, they're not different. because. Since this whole thing is manifesting through compassion, it would, of course, change with the needs of the society and people. But that's in parenthesis. We're going to get to that. OK. Why bother learning in the first place? All the things that you've just been told were empty. I mean, did I do it? Do you want it to either have a heart attack or probably um, string me up? <laughs> Why do we have this whole first part of the class? And so what, what is left? OK. Let's go on with this sutra. And no non-attainment. OK. You have no attainment. You don't have any non-attainment. All right, guys, you are sitting on your throne. And in there, here's the bad news. You're not going to get anything out of the last. Here's the good news, because you already have whatever it is. But that's going to be a little bit later, again, in parentheses. OK, so this is kind of a major watershed, as far as I see it, right, right there in that one little sentence of no attainment and no non-attainment. Remember, uh, just to make it concrete, the old hag who was a beauty, uh, remember Naropa? Gets the you know, seen by wisdom. All right. Some of the sight majors have probably seen this four times when they want to. I'm, OK, now just, just look at it. The ones who are laughing have probably seen it. It's a reversible figure. It's the uh, beautiful young woman, old hag. And it'll reverse on you. We will uh, post this on the website so you can play with it. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like it's a more elaborate form of a necker cube. And that's, this is really the entire world of samsara. This is a picture of it. That is that seen from the samsara point of view, oh, like that, you know, and seen from Prajnaparamita, whoo. OK, so since the bodhisattvas don't have any attainment, they abide by means of Prajnaparamita. And since their minds are not obscure, they have no fear. Imagine living with no fear. They transcend falsity. OK, no falsity. Um, and they attain complete nirvana. And the literal translation is they pass beyond the bounds of sorrow. And thus, all the Buddhas, through this wisdom, attain complete enlightenment. OK. Now, the idea is that you're not going to find your own wisdom of Prajnaparamita, except going more deeply and precisely into what mindfulness brings up. So otherwise, it's just a fantasy. And it's language, and it's ideas, and it's not really seeing. And then it's not going to do its magical work. And the result of taking the trouble to do that sounds pretty good. I mean, they just had this whoopee, you know, we're you know, all these great things. So. And it's a different view of nirvana. So you're not leaving the world. You're abiding by means of Prajnaparamita. You're abiding right here through wisdom. And know that emptiness does not mean nothing, or non-existence, or void, or realism. It's seeing through things, through the wisdom vision of those things. So it doesn't mean business as usual either. Uh, 
uh, you know, with things existing, it is a middle way between those two of the world having its own different reality. It's known by a different kind of knowing, and that's what I've been trying to prepare you for the whole time, because you kind of have to do that even to get to the first part. And then it goes into this thing about a mantra. So this, we didn't have any of that before. So these words, the sound of these words, are encapsulating the whole thing that was said, and then allowing you, or feeding it into you, uh, so that you can have this realization, and it calms all suffering, and so on. And here's the mantra, Om Gate Gate, Kar Gate, Arsan Gate, Jodi, Saha. And you have a whole reading that goes into all the words and talks about what they mean, and future lectures will be expanding on that. And then, okay, Gary Sutra, so you should train in this Vedanta Karsha Karmisha. But I noticed by, uh, so it's not just the mantra that you're studying and chant and so on, it's the whole thing. So you're going to both do this thing where the sound will affect your mind and your body, and you're also going to study and understand and do very good at it. And then the Buddha kind of uh, comes back and says his first and his last words. He says, good, good, oh, son of noble family, you know, practice this way, and um, you got it, and then the whole world rejoices. So we're, we're going to go into the meaning of this, but communication changes, sound becomes important. Now, uh, if this, they, they were supposed to come and show us how to work the native uh, sound system, but they didn't. So we have this little gadget. And um, what I have here is the what you just heard sung in its, or parts of it, excerpts from it, sung in the original Sanskrit. Uh, and what happens with this is that every tradition will chant it or sing it in their own language and uh, in their own way of doing it. And since Buddhism died out in India, uh, who knows the way that was done originally, but now uh, this is revived a bit. So what you're going to get are parts of the heart switch, and you'll, re you'll recognize words. You'll hear Prajnaparamita, and you'll hear Skandhas, Panchas, five Skandhas, and you'll hear uh, the names of the Bodhisattvas and, and so on. But because it's modern, you know, this is a modern thing, you'll also hear what it's done to in the modern thing, so you'll hear strains of Bollywood musicals coming in. All right. Uh, and then I'll give you your contemplation. Actually, this is going to take four minutes and 17 seconds to get through. And if it doesn't work, um, it won't work. And we'll get it next time. Does it have batteries? Ah, okay. All right, why, why don't, I'll, I'll tell you your, your... I'll tell you your contemplation, and then you'll get to relax with this singing. Maybe. Okay. It, what, this? Nine. Um, it's to pick anything that strikes you from either the Thich Nhat Hanh video or the Heart Sutra and to chew on it deeply because any one thing that you go into and chew on and contemplate is going to be the doorway into all the rest. Okay, now. Um, the, uh, the sound, the picture of Avalokiteshvara, he undergoes a sex change in historically as it moves to East Asia. So in China and Japan, he becomes Guan Yin and she's pictured as a lovely lady with a vase that in which she pours an elixir that soothes suffering sentient beings, and she listens to the cries of the world. So this is part of the importance of sound coming in. And so here uh, it is in Sanskrit, and we'll see if we get it.
information. Also, cut out a lot of information. There's a couple more slides on this lecture, but I don't want to run over my time. I'll pick those up on Friday and we'll get caught up. Thank you. I'm on office hours this afternoon. If anybody's got any reason to see me.